Hi guys, so today we're going to be looking at how are volcanic mountains formed and this is found in chapter 4.7 of our Jacaranda textbook. So a quick recap of what we've looked at so far this term in humanities and how this is related to what we're going to be looking at today. We started off looking at the different types of landscapes which included mountains, deserts, rainforests, grasslands, polar regions, karst landscapes, aquatic landscapes, islands and built landscapes which were man-made. We then went and looked at what landforms make up Australia which include the coastal lowlands, the central lowlands, Great Western Plateau and the eastern highlands. We then looked at where are the world's mountains, okay so we're focusing on mountains as our type of landscape. Then we looked at the forces that form mountains uh, and that includes three different forces, convergent plates, divergent plates, and lateral plate slippage. Um, so convergent plates when they come together, divergent when they're separating, and lateral plate slippage is when they're sliding together. Then last class we looked at how do earthquakes and tsunamis occur. And today we're looking at how volcanic mountains form. So we'll be looking at a little bit um, more in volcanoes in the next few lessons. <clears throat> So here's a definition I would like you to pause the video at some stage and write down. So a volcano definition. What is a volcano? A volcano is a cone-shaped hill or mountain formed when molten magma in the Earth's mantle is forced through an opening or vent in the litho lithosphere. Okay, so now would be a good time to pause and to write that into your exercise book. We've got three locations of where volcanoes form on this earth, okay? So where two continental, continental, continental plates are converging, pushing together, where two plates are diverging, pulling apart, which also causes a drift zone, and we'll look at it a little bit later on, or a volcano can form over a hot spot, which we're also gonna be looking at today. I'd make a list of those three in your exercise book. Here's just a refresher of a map of the Earth and the different continental plates. So we're to think of it as a jigsaw. Now the Earth's always moving around, all right? So they're either uh, pulling away from each other, pushing against each other, or sliding against each other. But we'll start with looking at volcanic hotspots. Although most volcanoes are formed on plate boundaries, some are located in the middle of plates, a long way from plate boundaries. These volcanoes have formed above a hotspot, which is a single plume of rising mantle. Volcanoes form as the plates slowly move over the hotspot, and over time, a chain of volcanoes can form. Hotspots are found in the ocean and on continents. Examples include the Hawaiian Islands and many of Australia's extinct volcanoes. In Hawaii, the location of the volcano give gives us a clue to the direction and speed of the plate movement. So these are interesting ones. So if we look back at that first sentence, although most volcanoes are formed on plate boundaries, hot spots are not. So they are formed uh, anywhere in, in the world. Um, and a lot of them, as I mentioned, are in Hawaii and we do have some extinct ones here in Australia. And they're a single plume of rising mantle where the plate, due to its movement over this hot spot, causes friction and the heat to rise. Now I thought this image explains what a hotspot is really well. If we just um, focus on the middle, sorry, where it says hotspot, okay, so on either side we've got um, plates that are diverging. So we've got on the right hand side the continental plate hitting an oceanic plate and we can see from the arrow that that's going and going down um, and closing some volcanoes on the right hand side but I just want to focus in the middle so the hot spot we can see that there's no no boundary where there's no two plates meeting um, we can see underneath the hot spot there's the, the mantle plume and that is causing extreme heat to come up and just causing that volcano at that hot spot. So that plate has obviously been moving and the friction and the heat from the movement of the plate over that hot spot has caused the magma to rise 
and come through a crack in the Earth's surface. And once we, once magma comes out of a volcano, that's what we call lava. This is just another example of where we can look at it, a hotspot. Okay, so if we're looking at this area here, we can see that there's no two plates meeting where, the, where this hotspot is. Here's two plates meeting. We've got the continental plate and the oceanic plate meeting, and they're converging. And the oceanic crust is being forced down. Likewise over here, we've got the continental plate and the oceanic plate. And if they two meet, is always the oceanic plate that gets forced down because it's weaker. So there some volcanoes might form and then some earthquakes might form. But here, this is the hot spot that we're looking at. And we can see these convection cells. They're a bit like, I thought a good example of this would be to think about rice cooking in your pot at home. So that once it heats up, it rises to the top and then it falls back down to the bottom of the pan. Then it heats back up and falls back down. That's exactly what's happening in this mantle. All right, so the hot spot uh, is extreme heat from the core. It's rising up and coming out in a weak spot in the crust. Oops. Okay, subduction zone. Some volcanoes are formed when an oceanic plate is pulled underneath a continental plate, which I just mentioned before. As the crust is forced down, it heats up and becomes magma. It can then rise to the Earth's surface through a magma chamber, which we just looked at as well. So this is what we're talking about as a subduction zone, where the oceanic crust and the continental crust meet, and the oceanic, oceanic crust gets forced down because it's not as strong as the continental crust, and that's exactly where um, subdu subduction happens. Volcanoes in rift zones. Okay, rift zones occur when two plates move away from each other. The molten lava rises to the surface in the space between the two plates, uh, and the largest volcanoes appear above the water as islands. So this can often happen. What happens where two plates meet, and often happens in the ocean. So the longest mountain range in the world is actually underwater. It's called the Mid-Atlantic Range, and it's 56,000 kilometers long. And it's made up of many volcanic mountains. So it runs right from the top here, um, as you can see in this map. All right, summing up today, this is a really good image, despite it not great quality. I think it explains the three things that we looked at. We've got our rift zones, where we can look at these two plates, they're pulling apart, and then the heat uh, and the, the magma is actually just replacing where, those, where that land was because the two plates are diverging, they're pulling apart. We've got a volcanic hotspot where there's no plate boundary, just movement and, and friction from the plate actually moving over the hotspot has caused that magma to rise and come through a spot in the Earth's crust. And we've got the subduction zone, okay? So we spoke about them here. Where we've got the oceanic plate and the uh, continental plate meeting. The oceanic plate going under the continental plate or the continental crust because it's weaker. And that causes that friction, the magma to rise and a volcano to form. Also, that's, that's causing because of the, the mountain's going to form as well. That's something that's been pushed down that's going to cause this to push up. So that's the three things we'll take out of today. Our rift zone formation, our volcano hotspots, and our subduction zones.